Hello, Kelly. Well, wow, it, it, it feels like a long time since we were back here in this space, because I think we, the last time we were here was for the Christmas party on the 20th. Um, so welcome back. Hope everybody had a, a, a fantastic holiday break. Um, I got to play Lego with uh, Benjamin, so that was fun. I'd build it, he'd break it. <laughs> um, so it's Tuesday, January 15th. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Paige and um, Lynn last week for organizing the field trip to ATB Financial, the Strathcona branch. That was uh, great. We had a bunch of people attend. So that was uh, lots of fun to learn all about uh, hiring Brian through the Rotary Employment Partnership Program. So that was great. Our very own Kathy Strobel is our guest speaker today. Although I understand we're doing most of the speaking. <laughs> Very sneaky. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. How do you get better if you don't talk? That's great. So um, we're going to, we have a few guests here. We've got uh, our friends over here. If you haven't introduced yourself, uh, uh, Tadawa, did I say that right? And Mike. Uh, who are hoping to become members. We've got Patrick Gibson from the Rotary Club of Edmonton Strathcona. We'll be talking about these guys, tickets for the Oil Kings hockey game. We've got Aaron over here, who you know if you've been to one of the Neighbor Center dinner clubs. Uh, he has been there, so he's going to say a few words. And we have Kira from the U of A uh, Rotary Club to come and to just represent, I guess. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to start with the Rotary moment. So I'm going to hand this over to... Stan Bissell. Go Stan. Oh, oh, wow. So now that I'm doing my public speaking here now, I don't have to do it later, right? So, yeah, I'm good. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I was looking online for something to talk about for a Rotary Moment today, and I came across this uh, thing that uh, was for the last hundred years of Rotary, from 1905 to whenever that would be, 2005, um, it listed all of the presidents of Rotary and what their Rotary vision was for the year. And it was, it was fascinating. Um, there's some pretty amazing lofty goals that Rotary has each year, like uh, world peace or eradicating polio, or um, and it's, it was kind of a little historical piece, like um, um, rebuilding after World War II, or there's all kinds of cool things, joining the space race or supporting the space race. So it was really neat. But what I found fascinating was that there's all these crazy, cool, lofty goals that Rotary has. But the very first one, something that I thought was really sort of touching, and I'll read it to you. The Rotary vision in the first year, this was Paul Harris when he was the president of the Rotary Club, was to harness the great power of friendship to help do the world's work. And he said, friendship is a natural and willing servant. There is no reason why the great power of friendship should not be harnessed to do its part in the world's work. And a couple other presidents along the way sort of picked this same theme of friendship up. Um, in 1920, uh, the Rotary vision for that year was to make Rotary friendship and fellowship a living force in the world at large. And even in 1995, the vision for that year was uh, that Rotary be a friend to all. And uh, the president that year said, Rotary was born out of loneliness. And it exists to bring hope to the lonely and help to the desolate. So I thought that was pretty cool, sort of these humble beginnings for what's now a really complex, large organization with some pretty cool goals. And that's your moment. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. OK, we have some birthdays in December and January. Uh, we missed Mike Brandigan's His birthday was December 23rd. Darren's birthday is coming, uh, uh, actually, was just a few days ago. Well, happy birthday. Uh, and Tamara, a fellow Aquarian, and her birthday is on the 27th. Woo! Uh, anniversaries, hard to believe, but Maria Reyes is celebrating 17 years, and Alfonso as Rotarian, and Alfonso is celebrating six. So there you go. All right. So, Patrick, would you like to come up and talk about the Oil Kings hockey game? 
<laughs> thank you very much. Um, first off, I want to really thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, you have uh, you have stood up to the challenge every year for the last four or five years and bought, in some cases, substantial numbers of tickets. Um, this year, our club will give you a run for your money, but still, <laughs> 50 tickets to start with. Thank you very much. Um, at the end of the after the hockey game is over. We will be sending a list of contributors to, to the district, and you guys will get credit for $7 per ticket. So that's 350 bucks towards Polio Plus in your club's name. Um, of course, unless you buy more tickets, then that number will go up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll be looking after all the paperwork and submitting for everybody else, and then the district will do their match and do their thing from there. So I just want to say thank you very, very much for your, uh, your continued support. can always count on you guys to... Uh, to step up and, uh, and give us a hand with this project. So thank you. So I do have the 50 tickets right here. So if you'd like, they're $25 each. And as Patrick said, uh, $7 from each ticket goes to uh, Polio Plus. Uh, and also uh, there is, a, okay, so the game is on Family Day, which is the February 18th. Yep. And before that, there is a pregame mixer in the North Mezzanine Club. So you get that. Along with some auction. Oh. In the North Mezzanine Lounge. And there is some Oilers memorabilia from the 83 84 season. Wow. That would be up for auction as well. So, okay, so for everybody online, if you missed that, there is a silent auction uh, at the pregame mixer in the North Mezzanine Club, and there are some uh, auction, Oilers auction items for you said the 83 and 84 year, seasons. Perfect. So get your tickets here. Perfect. Uh, and now I'd like to bring uh, Aaron up to talk about the Old Strathcona Street Outreach Mission. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me back, everyone. Um, actually, before I go on about the uh, talk to you about the an opportunity with the Old Strathcona Street Mission Outreach, uh, Kathy just invited me to share something about my experience with Toastmasters. So, um, I don't know about when was it like ten years ago or so. I had to. Uh, I used to be in international sales, so I went to Germany a lot, and uh, I was asked to give a twenty-minute speech about a certain product in Germany to eight hundred people, and I had never spoken to anyone more than a room full of like fifteen people. So I went to the local Toastmasters, and this was in. Uh, this was in London, Ontario, and I said to the, look, guys, I, I got to do this big speech, 800 people. I don't have any experience. I know you're not a crash course kind of organization, but I really need your help. And I said, you know, I, I'll be honest, I travel a lot, and uh, I'm probably almost for sure not going to join your organization, but I just need your help for like six weeks. And they were like, oh, for sure, for sure, we'll give you lots of practice. And so I went every week, uh, every Tuesday for six weeks, and at every, uh, at every meeting, they gave me lots of opportunity to speak in front and I wrote up some speeches and they were gave me lots of feedback it was fantastic yeah so yeah that's my experience with Toastmasters so uh, my name's Aaron uh, and uh, I'm with the old Strathcona Street Mission Outreach uh, so we operate out of uh, Strathcona Baptist Church so we're uh, street outreach we're boots on the ground and basically we're we're very relational so you know I mean, uh, thankfully, this is Canada, so there's lots of places for our, our homeless neighbors to get sandwiches and socks. But what there's a real lack of is, is people that will come alongside our homeless neighbors um, in authentic relationship and just formulate real friendships and just come alongside without trying to fix people and, and that kind of thing. And, and when, when we do that kind of thing with one another, amazing things happen and uh, people start to feel comfortable and honest and start to an express desire to elevate their position in society or situation in, in, in society in their life. So because of my experience working at the neighbor center for many years, and uh, I, I have lots of contacts with uh, detox, rehab, housing, uh, lawyers, all this kind of thing. So I can really walk with people as they make that journey from uh, brokenness to wholeness and while letting them be the lead on it, right? We always make sure that people are, are the lead dog, so to speak, because, uh, yeah, it gives them the satisfaction. They're responsible for their own lives. So, yeah, uh, you know, our day basically is spent uh, in and around Old Strathcona in the alleyways, on the streets, in the public washrooms and 
and this kind of thing. And um, yeah, it's some fantastic things have have happened, been happening for the 13, 14 months since the street outreach has been happening. So there's some opportunity. So uh, about I don't know when was it? About a month and a half ago, two months ago, Kathy uh, joined me. Kathy's the Kathy Strobel, your name's not up there right now, but <laughs> Kathy Strobel came out on the street with me. I know Kathy and Kristen from the dinner club. I used to be uh, a participant at the dinner club, and that's how I know Kevin and Scott as well. And um, yeah, so uh, we are Kathy and I were walking and talking, and Kathy said, uh, you know, I, I was telling her about some opportunities coming up, places where I needed help, where the street mission could use some help. And Kathy said, you know, Plain, plain and simple, like, you know, don't don't just come to, we're a service organization, but don't just come to us for financial partnership. You know, there's a lot of talent and expertise and people with some giftings that you could probably draw upon. And uh, so I explained to her that, um, well, I'll, I'll explain to you now that, so for the past two, two uh, um, years during the Pride Festival, uh, I've been hired to, so the mustard seed is given a stack of money from the Pride Festival organizers. And what the mustard seed has done is, um, is subcontracted me to hire some of our neighbors on the street to clean up during the parade and at the festival grounds on the day of the parade, Saturday, and then the next day at the, uh, at the festival grounds as well, right? So, um, we're given so much X amount of dollars, and so typically I hire um, seven of our homeless neighbors. And what's so fantastic about this, guys, is that um, for the past two years, I've got this, um, it's incredible. My wife and I pull up, and we meet our uh, the people that we've hired at the, um, at the parking lot at Strathcona Church, ready to do a day's work. So when I hire people, I, I don't just hire the people that I think are going to, make it for sure like in and around this area we have our our regular homeless neighbors marginalized neighbors kind of like the people that a lot of the store owners know and, and can and can be reliable relied on to show up um and uh because you know they're going to get paid and that but i also i hire those people but i also hire people that i think there might be a chance of them not showing up because that's really who needs the opportunity to to see that there's better options in 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 life you know better options to make and there are decisions every day in their life that they can make that can elevate their situation so um yeah, so the only, you know, the, the, the only rules of the game are show up on time Saturday morning and show up sober. So both years in a row, pull up, my wife and I, Wanda, get out of the car, and they can't wait to tell us that they've managed to be sober and stay sober the night before. And they've accomplished so much in their life. Just even before we pick up one speck of garbage off that road or at the festival grounds, and it's touching. So, um, you know, we are in this area, as we're all aware, there's lots of festivals that go on, right? We have the Art Walk, we have, uh, we have the Fringe Festival, and there's a couple of others. So um, I approached the, the lady who... Um, from the paint spot, her name is Kim, and she, her store and her staff are the ones that put on the art art walk every year. So I approached her with um, the idea of hiring some of our homeless neighbors to clean up and, and this kind of thing. And she loved the idea, she was all over it, but she said, we don't really need people to clean and stuff like that. What we need some people to do is help to load and unload the exhibit. So as you know, probably are aware, so the art walk, I think it's sometimes in July let's call it July but it's it's Friday afternoon all day Sunday and all day Sunday uh, all day Saturday and all day Sunday but the exhibitors don't leave their little stand up overnight so Friday they set up and then Friday night they have to tear down then Saturday they set up Saturday night they turn it on Sunday blah, blah. so she said we need help so they have loading and unloading spots throughout this area but there's a big backup right because it takes a lot of time she said we could hire six or seven of uh, of your of your friends on the street, Aaron, and just to help load and unload and help our exhibitors. That would be fantastic. So um, we haven't talked about how much money in this kind of thing and what's the pay is going to be. But what what we what the street outreach really needs is someone who will take this. Um, uh, by the horns and, and, and make it happen. And I'm not talking about, like, I can take care of the, uh, 
um, hiring supervisors and, and work that day, but behind the scenes, like what, what does it mean? Like, what, do we get, you know, we're going to pay in ca we pay cash at the end of the day. Right. And so to, like, where does the ben who pays the benefits? How does all that happen? You know, I know so little about it. I barely can even describe what I need to you. Right. But, um, I just need someone to, to organize it, to get it to the point where, okay, Friday, here's Aaron and he's got seven of, uh, of, a, of his friends from the street and some supervisors, right? I can handle all that part. I just need someone to work with Kim and uh, yeah, do everything that leads up, up to that point. So, um, you know, I'm not, uh, yes. You could do that. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. What's your name? Kelly? Okay, thank you very much, Kelly. So uh, I'll give you my card and then we can talk. Um, I'll, I'll just g get your phone number. We'll call. We'll talk to each other later. Okay? Thank you. Well, thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, there you go. Thank you, Kelly, for stepping up and helping out. Uh, yeah, Aaron, um, is, is he does great things in the community and uh, always good to hang out with him at the dinner club. And uh, so I'm happy that we can help you out. Before we move on to our main event, Kathy Strobel, I just want to go around with our uh, com uh, committee chairs to see if there are any announcements, starting with Stan. Yes, uh, so next Tuesday, I am going to do a presentation on Shelterbox. I do not work for Shelterbox. I have somehow become a volunteer for Shelterbox in the, in the process of organizing this uh, little fundraiser next Friday. Uh, so they have sent me a PowerPoint and we've done some online training. And so I'm going to uh, give it a go at uh, presenting next Tuesday on what Shelterbox is and what they do. Uh, and then uh, next Friday at my house, having a little get together, and I really hope you, that you can come. So far, we have very few people registered, um, and I want people to come to my party. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's ten bucks, just like uh, at a meeting, um, and um, I will supply the uh, the beverages and some snacks. And uh, I have the shelter box from the district at my house, and so I will set it up. I don't know if I'm going to set up the tent. It's like heavy duty. Like uh, you need several people to do it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so yeah, it'll be a chance to see what a shelter box is and uh, just uh, for some fellowship and uh, yeah, a, a sort of fundraiser on the side. Signature drinks. Signature drinks. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, yes. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm going to for the shelter box and the bourbon. So, uh, Kevin, do you have any announcements? Uh, other than the communications chair, uh, the community. The communications chair is a shame that uh, he does not remember his uh, the White Avenue ro Rotary Twitter password at the moment, but he just looked it up. So you'll see posts soon. So crisis averted. <laughs> okay, Kristen, do you have any updates you'd like to pass on? Should we call you Crash, Kristen? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's full of nicknames for me. <laughs> um, I just wanted to follow up with my email about the uh, dinner club is still looking for another volunteer. Um, so Darren has indicated he'd like to join our little dinner club crew, uh, but there is still opportunity if someone is interested in participating in dinner club once in a three week cycle, you would be with Marilyn and Darren on that same day. So if you're interested in more details or to find out what dinner club's all about, or even just to go once, then please let us know and we can set that up for you. Team Bay, by the way. Team Boston. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we don't have a name yet. Team, well, right now we're working on Team Bravo, but uh, maybe we'll have to come up with something better. Team Better. Uh, <laughs> team Best. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, anybody else have any announcements before I turn it over? Oh, okay. <laughs> This 
is this is happy happy news. For the last uh, five months, I've been a little a wall due to a unplanned stint of unemployment. I was uh, laid off, and I'm happy to announce I am duly employed again. I have a <laughs> full time position. I'm the investment specialist with. Uh, Canadian Western banks. So it's very good news. I've got a wonderful new job, but I do have a six week course I have to take every Tuesday and Thursday for six weeks. So I may be a well a little bit longer, but things have, I've got a smile on my face again. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay. Any other announcements going once, twice? No. Nice. Oh, oh. oh. Happy bucks, then? Sure. Um, oh. I just want to show how happy I am for that as well. So I just wanted to throw it. Oh. Uh, this is just a dual happy because that makes me very happy as well. So I'm very happy for you. Congratulations. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> okay, please. Okay, for those people not here, um, Mr. Moneybags here has thrown his money into a plate of food. <laughs> there we go. Please. Okay. Happy bucks we borrowed from other clubs. I think, Patrick, you've probably seen this. When someone has something good to share, they throw in a toonie, a loony, or whatever they've got just to say, hey, this is my great news, so you can share what's happening in our lives. Sometimes we come to meetings, it's all business, we all finish, and we go. So I'm really happy that Laura shared her. Thank you. I've been broke for three, five months. <laughs> <laughs> and the happy, and the happy bucks goes toward the annual fund as a donation from the club. So that's where we go. We don't keep it and spend it on food. Don't worry about it. No bourbon. <laughs> and I'm going to throw in two dollars happy bucks for you, for your achievement as well. Woohoo! That's awesome. Marilyn, uh, would you like to any announcements on your end? I do. I do have a really quick one. This is on behalf of the district. The district is embarking on a very new, innovative Rotary Club. So we're going to be chartering at, at least one, maybe three clubs in a total new format called the Passport Club. What is the Passport Club? Check out the district Facebook page. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but it is for a, a lot of former Rotarians that have left, uh, perhaps Rotaractors that have left Rotaract, but they can't afford to get, join a Rotary Club. It's a club that will work with all clubs in our district and globally. So you can work with any club to do any project, any fundraiser, whatever. It'll be fewer meetings, and we're going to have an information session about it on January 30th. That's a Wednesday at the Art of Cake. So check us out on uh, on Facebook and ask me if you have any questions. Could be some friends of our club here that might be interested in that. But all importantly, maybe one of those people would be a volunteer to join Dinner Club or any of our other projects. So they will be of benefit to every club in our district. Uh, actually, if you're if you're interested and you have friends that would be interested in coming to the session, because we have limited space for people, but I forgot to mention, actually, the most important piece of all this is that our club has agreed to sponsor this club. There's no cost involved, but every new club, every charter has to be sponsored by an existing club, and this is something that our club can do. Perfect. What is the art of cake? The art of cake is a kind of a it's a cake bakery, basically. Uh, Nicole Conkin, who's a wedding planner, found the venue. I was looking actually for a brew pub that my nephew is opening, but they haven't got the license yet, so I didn't want to delay it any longer. So Art of Cake is 118th Street, just behind, close behind um, Meltem's Shoppers, you know, in behind there, 118th Street, in, in the brewery district, yeah. Uh, maybe. Oh, then you know how good it is. If anyone wants to do a Rotary Trivia Night, uh, the, who uh, uh, is providing the, the cake for my wedding also happens to be. Okay. <laughs> so pretty fantastic spot. All right. Thank you. Awesome. So what to do for a bio for Kathy Strobel? Oh, man, could I talk for, for hours now? Uh, Kathy Strobel is our past president and current membership chair and Toastmaster extraordinaire. So I'm going to let you uh, introduce your topic today and uh, let you take it. Thank you very much. That rhymed as well. Membership chair and extraordinaire. Very well done. 
I did fail because this is one of the most important things in Toastmasters is that you provide people with an appropriate introduction. And Marilyn will know that I failed on that point. To start, who besides Aaron, and now I've also introduced that Marilyn knows Toastmasters, who's been involved in a Toastmasters club in the past? M Kelly and Kevin. Okay, anyone else? All right. Um, so currently a member, Marilyn. She's going to be my assistant today. I have some agendas. Yeah, that's right. For those of you online, is anyone online? We're recording this for posterity and for archives. I have an agenda. That's right. If you don't mind passing that along, I'll throw a couple this way. This is a simplified agenda. Toastmasters generally is credited for helping people with public speaking. Going from a group of 20 people to 800 people is a huge endeavor, and I really appreciate that Aaron sought some expertise and asked his local Toastmasters club to help him out, which is very good. The reason why I joined really was to speak in public, and I think if you have a job that makes you do that, it's practice, 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 that's what gets you better. The other parts about Toastmasters that I love is that we do business meetings, we learn parliamentary procedure, so how do we run an effective AGM, for example? That has been invaluable. So every week that I go to Toastmasters, we have a business meeting and I learn something new about Robert's Rules of Order. We also do impromptu speaking, which you will see tonight. We've already had our business meeting, essentially. But Marilyn's going to run some impromptu two-minute speeches that you'll all get a chance to partake in. You're so lucky. Then we also have our one speaker, usually in our club, it's an hour and a half meeting, we have three prepared speeches and we have three evaluators giving points on the speech. Not necessarily the content, but if your, your purpose is to persuade someone to take action and donate to Shelterbox, then we want to know that you were effective in that objective. So we have different objectives in our speeches, we give some pointers and evaluations, and then we have a general evaluator for the meeting who also talks about how the meeting ran in general. So that is the structure of my meeting. There are plenty of Toastmasters clubs in the city, all run a little bit differently. It's like Rotary clubs, they're all just a little bit different, so it's fun to go check them out. The last piece I wanted to mention is... Tabletop is prepared, yeah. So we get the chance to learn how to write, learn how to speak, learn how to keep on time, learn parliamentary procedure to get a meeting moving, and also we have something called an awe counter. And Kira, you've sort of volunteered to help me out with that. Today what she's going to do is every time she hears from now on, an awe, um, uh, what? Word whiskers? I've never heard that expression, but we'll use that any awkward pause, anything that detracts from your speaking, she's going to ring a bell. Do you have it ready for us to hear? <laughs> That's well done. Anytime you hear that, it's because she's heard you say ah or um, something that track detracts from your speaking. So she's going to try really hard, and that's a tough rule. So it's really, you have to be very attentive, so I appreciate your volunteering for that. So now to my time, I have actually, also Laura is going to be our timer today. She's going to be our timer, so she's going to keep us on schedule. It is currently 6.30, so I am five minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> so if you see the agenda, I'm going to introduce, actually 10 minutes ahead of schedule, Marilyn's got a little bit of extra time to go through table topics. Toastmasters is a weekly meeting. It's practice, practice, practice. We don't talk so much about what to, to do to be a great speaker. We just do it. She's going to come up, introduce table topics, two-minute impromptu speaking. She'll introduce it more. And Laura will time each, so she'll give you indicators. Do you need any? I'll let you introduce it. Sure. Thanks, Kathy. <coughs> Ah, you, you've been to a meeting, I can tell. Table topics. It's the name of this section of a Toastmasters meeting that helps all of the participants with impromptu speaking. 
And one thing that's important about a Toastmasters club, there isn't you know one person that's the guru of the club. Everybody supports one another. So when you're doing your speech or Kevin's doing the speech, everybody provides feedback, and we're taught to do feedback in the sandwich technique, which is a positive thing followed by a developmental area and wrapped up with something positive. But we all need help. Sometimes it's good to video yourself when you're speaking because you don't know that you have these little twitches and you hold your hands in the fiddly position or whatever it is, you don't know. So table topics, in my opinion, is one of the most important ones because they're short speeches. They are literally speeches. But they are important so that you collect your thoughts. Think on your feet. Impromptu speaking, you get into an elevator and someone starts a conversation on something other than the weather. And you want to carry on something intelligent with them, which means that you want to think about it really quickly and put some words together. Which is also why if you watch somebody like our Prime Minister, he's very good in his prepared speeches, but if you ever see him in the town halls or wherever he's given a quick question off the floor, he does a whole lot of ums and ahs. As a listener, I'm aware of it because I've been an awe counter as well, so you're trained to hear those. What we're going to do here in a table topics, I have four questions. I'm going to say the question. They're all road related, by the way, so it's easy. I'm going to say the question, and then I'm going to pick a person. And then we'll clap for that person because they're going to stand up, and they're going to respond to that question for a minimum of a minute. That's what we're trying. That's our goal. Try and get to one minute, and two minutes is the maximum. So if there's some people that are long-winded, I'm one of those, then we would start clapping if, when we usually have lights at the Toastmasters meeting and so when it gets to red, everybody knows they can clap that person down. But this person, at this point, the goal is just to get to one minute. Here we go, question number one. What was your impression of Rotary at your first meeting? Kevin. I will take it. Thank you so much. Oh, I guess I'll come up. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, that's exactly my plan. I'm just going to waste out this clock a bit. So the question was on what was my first impressions of Rotary when I first came. So I came on a beautiful sunny day, even though it wasn't that sunny. And all I could think to myself is, I'm sure all these people are great, but that food table looks amazing. <laughs> so uh, as much as I wanted to socialize, I was very new to the city. You're probably going to hear that sound a lot during today. Uh, I couldn't help but help myself and get a couple treats over on the counter. What I realized, though, is as I was going around grabbing some of that food, people were introducing themselves to me. We were actually conversing about how good this food looks, and then it moved on to more exciting conversations. It made me realize that not only is this a place for fantastic food, it is a place to make fantastic friendships. And the conversations just began to roll so easily. So though it started with food, it branched into uh, a much bigger community-minded and rooster and squealing-inducing <laughs> situation, which was so entertaining. So that was uh, my first experience. Was that the sign for one minute? OK, excellent. <laughs> so thank you. Awesome, awesome, Kevin. That's great. Yes. I'm glad she mentioned that. I didn't know if we were prepared for that. In a typical Toastmaster meeting as well, all clubs do this. Since we're going to have a round of these random speakers for table topics, we all get to vote for the best table topic speaker. Some clubs have prizes for that. It, it varies, but this gives you an opportunity now to vote. We will have four speakers, so you'll have a chance to vote. The papers are being... Oh, okay, that's good. We have three more. And wait wait till you speak. Anyway, so at the end, we'll hand in the ballots and we'll announce who the winner was. Second question. How did you learn about Rotary? James. Whoa, how did I learn about Rotary? 
Before I start really getting into my speech here, I'm going to put my hat on because I've never done public speaking. Actually, that's not true. I have done public speaking only twice ever without my hat on in the, the uh, Legion and Red Deer. So what was the question again? How did I learn about Rotary? I think I've been aware of Rotary for quite some time because my uncle in Grand Prairie has been a member of the Sunrise Club for, I can't think of the number of years off the top of my head, but quite a few years. Um, and then I was sort of reintroduced to it by the rooster sound <laughs> that's going off in my head. I was reintroduced to it by my mother's neighbor when she lived in Clareview, because he was the president of a um, one of the local chapters of the Rotary. Um, and I just said, um, so either I want to become the prime minister or we've already got to one minute. Thank you. See how quickly everybody wants to shut her down when they get to one because they're dragging it to the end. Thank you, James. That's excellent. Next question. And I will summarize everybody's responses just to remind you and help you with your vote. Number three, what do you like about our club meetings? Darren. I'll get started now. So I think that I like club meetings for three reasons. The first reason is because I find that when you're meet, when you're coming to the meetings, that you're meeting different people each time. For example, I met Kelly, who is our charter member there, and it was it's always great to be able to see different people and the, especially the experience of the club and the history of the club, and have so many different people uh, come and say hi to you and go. And it's especially uh, it's especially oh no, <laughs> sorry. Oh, is that an accident one? Okay, that's okay. Uh, the second one oh. <laughs> uh, the second, oh, I can't, I, I'm stuttering, okay. So the second one, uh, the second reason why I really like is because I think that the location is very central, so I work downtown, and being able to come here is a really great way to, to do that. And the third reason is that I really like to talk with people that I have met before and see how they're doing throughout their lives. I really like to engage in what they're doing outside of Rotary and see how they're doing as a person. Uh, for example, I know Kathy works in my building and being able to talk to her about how busy or how not busy, which is not always the case, how, how busy work is, is always a treat for me and being able to talk to Marilyn, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Good job. I'm going to comment here quickly because Darren did something that I didn't even remind everybody to do, but a table topics, as I mentioned, response is like a mini speech. And a speech has three components to it, a beginning, a middle, and an end. When you rephrase the question at the beginning, it could very well be that beginning part. And then what was important about the middle that Darren just did is he says, I like rotary meetings for three reasons. And then he went one, two, three, and did those three things, and then said at the end, that's why I like the meetings. That's a good example of a proper wrap-up and a beginning, middle, and close. Last question. What is your favorite Rotary project? Stan. OK. I think probably, hello, I'm going to talk about three things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stan. <laughs> um, I think my favorite Rotary project. I didn't say um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, my favorite Rotary project is uh, one that I did, uh, I did say on that time, um, a few years ago in Belize, and uh, it was very exciting <laughs> to get to go and work with teachers in Belize through Rotary. There was something called the Belize Literacy Project that's um, not really up and running anymore, but it um, was a way uh, to, uh, <laughs> to work with teachers in a developing place like Belize and bring down some teachers in from Alberta uh, who had some expertise in different areas 
and to do some work with them, to do some professional development work with them. So I got to go and do that for a couple of years, and uh, that was one of the coolest sort of rotary things that I've done. Wow, I say I'm a lot. <laughs> Good job. That's why we have a bell. In my club, we have those bells. You know when you go to a bank or to a store and as a thing for service, it's really loud. It can be very annoying. But you do remember, and it's proof that you then don't want to hear the bell. Last question. It's turned out to be kind of like a rotary, rotary, rotary trivia thing. What is the Rotary Foundation Polio Plus Initiative? Patrick. What is the Polio Plus Initiative? Polio Plus is a program started by Rotary International uh, in conjunction with the Gates Foundation and uh, Gates Foundation and World Health Organization, actually, to uh, eradicate polio. If nobody here remembers, but uh, 40 years ago, there was over 300,000 new cases of polio every year. That was the incentive behind uh, the World Health Organization's push to start and get, get rid of it. And this is really tough. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we're down to 12 cases this year. We've come, we've come a long way, but we're not done yet. We're still in two countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And the problem that we're running into now is the parts of those countries that, we, that we're trying to inoculate in are parts of the country where children traditionally are born at home. That adds a whole new level of uh, problem to getting these children inoculated. Here in North America, every child is born in a hospital. Polio vaccine is just something they, they automatically get. Some of these children in Pakistan and Afghanistan might be a year old before they're ever registered. They've missed that time period to get those initial polio vaccinations. That's why I think we have a long fight ahead of us. Uh, I don't think we're done yet. We have a lot, of, a lot of work to do. Well, when you get down to one finger, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, great, a, a great endeavor, a great one to be associated with. I'm, uh, I'm happy to work with the district. I'm happy to work with our club to, uh, you know, to be hopefully somewhere down the road to be able to say polio is now gone and uh, we had a part in helping with that. Fantastic, fantastic. Great information from everybody because it's very personal. Your experience coming to the first Rotary meeting and that's what we heard from Kevin. And although he did say it was a food that attracted him, that's not what's kept him here, I'm sure. The second instance was how you learned about Rotary was with James. And James spoke about his uncle in Grand Prairie and some other connections. And he elaborated on that. And that's why he's here as well. Darren told us that he uh, likes our club meetings because of the people, the location, and engagement to get to know more about what people do on their, their jobs. Stan talked about the Belize Literacy Program, which I knew that was going to be his answer, which is an awesome project at the district level and for the way it's morphed into the playground project as well. And Patrick told us about Polio Plus, the long road that we've been on, but the, how close we are to eradicating it. And now if you could all take a look at your little slips of paper, write down your vote for the best table topic speaker, and I hand the microphone back to our Toastmaster, Kathy. Thank you. Please write your vote on there and keep it handy. We're also going to do a little bit of an evaluation for Scott, our official speaker. Oh, you need a pen. Anyone else need a pen? You can throw that around. So I will throw out these larger slips of paper are your feedback for Scott, speaker number one. Okay. Yeah, can you throw these down? I'll, I'll explain after you guys do your vote. That's correct. <laughs> That's a screen. Hmm. <laughs> 
It, it's a little long, but it's funny. It's super funny. Thank you. I will collect your votes. Oh, Marilyn is collecting votes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love it. It's great. Thank you, everyone, for participating in table topics. I get a little, little nervous. I always get a little sweaty before. I'm like, I hope they don't call on me. And then I get a question I can't answer, so I go on a tangent. You also learn that if you can't answer the question, go somewhere else. Say, that reminds me of my uncle in Grand Prairie. Just make it up. It's a wonderful thing. When you're, this is almost like, not speed dating, but you get the opportunity to run into someone in an elevator, run into someone at a networking event, you have an interview with someone, all of these little pieces, or dating someone. You get the opportunity just to say, hey, how do you answer that question and say something memorable rather than something, oh, I don't know, what do you think, kind of thing. It's not very memorable. So, moving on, Marilyn's counting. While she does that, I will introduce our speaker number one for this evening. He has a project with the theme, Get to the Point. His objectives include focus on his purpose for the speech today, stay, uh, don't use notes if possible, control your nervousness. This is one of the first speeches that everyone does in Toastmasters. He has four minutes today to speak and Laura will give him an indication at three minutes. Three, two, one, and then I'll give you 30, 30 seconds and 20. Okay, so she will count down for him. If you go over, it's okay. And Kira will be using the rooster to indicate ahs and ums. Any questions? He will introduce the title. The title is Get to the Point. The theme is Get to the Point. And the larger piece of paper that you received is for you to provide feedback. As Marilyn mentioned, we tend to use a sandwich technique. You did a really great opening, fantastic. I kind of lost you at the second point, and good job with your conclusion. Kind of good work on something and good feedback. That's what we look for. I now introduce you President Extraordinaire, past membership chair, Scott Young. Thank you. Thank you. As many of you know, I'm a, I'm a proud member of the Canadian Ski Patrol at Marmot Base. So I thought I would talk about what it is we actually do. So we are actually trained to the same level of first aid as the paid patrollers, and we're basically there to augment their numbers uh, on weekends just because the number of skiers and snowboarders is greater on the weekends than they are during the week. Our primary goal as a group is to maintain uh, safety for all of our patrons and we do that by sweeping or sorry I should say uh, doing a run check at the beginning of the day to make sure that all the hazards are marked all the signs are set up properly uh, we also do education uh, and, uh, and unfortunately sometimes we have to really <laughs> but sometimes we have to respond to accidents hopefully it's not a serious one uh, for example, this weekend on Saturday, I responded to an accident with a young lady who is six years old. She had fallen a few times, hurt her legs, and uh, I double-checked her, and she was fine. So all I had to do was take her down in a toboggan to the bottom of the lower chalet where she enjoyed a hot chocolate with her family. Fortunately, sometimes they are more serious and potentially life-threatening. Uh, for example, on, at the end of the day on Saturday, we or Sunday, we had a gentleman who had a high-speed crash and unfortunately left the hill uh, in an ambulance with a serious head injury, which is so hopefully is fine. Uh, we often will ski upon accidents or potential accidents. For example, I was skiing down a run called Trank on Saturday, and I see this guy covered in snow. He's got snow stuffed in his helmet, his helmet, his skis are all over the place. The, it's basically a yard sale. And it's somebody, uh, we call it, and somebody, a snowboarder had clipped him. And it turned out to be uh, Mike Strobel, who is the weatherman for Global. He was fine. We had a good chat, super nice guy. And uh, he was OK. Uh, we do safety campaigns. Unfortunately, recently, there's been a couple of fatalities at ski resorts out east where people fell out of the chair and because they didn't put the safety bar down, so I stood underneath one of the chairlifts as people were starting the run up the hill and asked them to put them down. 
uh, people were like, why do you want us to do that? Because I don't want you to fall out of the chair, dude. And, uh, and uh, they were fine with that. Now, one of the biggest hazards that we have because we're a mountain are avalanches. So we have a dedicated crew who goes and does the control work. Now, that's not something I do personally. They, uh, they drop bombs strategically to trigger avalanches. So my job is mainly to prevent people from going into those areas while they're doing the control work. Uh, we also are trained in avalanche rescue. So I do carry a beacon, a uh, avalanche shovel, and a probe so we can go rescue people. But generally, we try to also keep people out of the uh, avalanche areas because it's highly dangerous and for people getting caught in those. But we can do that. The hill has a zero tolerance policy for what we call poachers. So when we do catch them, we educate them. We take their pass. They're banned from the hill for 24 hours. In some cases, they're actually charged with trespassing depending on where they went. One of the kudos to Jasper is they were recently voted by USA Today readers as the number one ski town in North America. So I tip my hat to uh, to this world-class resort. Um, being a ski patroller at Marmot Basin is, uh, I patrol with great people. The skiing is great. And it certainly doesn't suck uh, being in the mountains in the winter. So we have our fellowship event on March 23rd in Jasper. So hopefully you can join us. Tim will uh, give you more details. And those are the reasons why I like being a ski patroller in Marmot Basin. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> exactly four minutes. All right, sweet. Thank Very you. well done. <laughs> Thank you. Very well done. I'll let you go and not trip yourself. That was a very good example of a first speech. You didn't have any notes. This is now my official, my official evaluation here. Get to the point was the objective for Scott. He told us about Marmot and his ski patrol experience. What was very well done is that he obviously has lots of experience. He's, he can easily talk to the job and to the weekends that he spends there. What I noticed was, because I told him it was only four minutes, he tried to rush in a lot of items. He felt, I felt that he felt a little rushed where he could have chosen three items to say, this is what we do. This is what a ski patroller does. These are our qualifications. This is what I do, one, two, three. And that's why I love what I do. Maybe throw in an example of head injury person. Unfortunately, there's a lot of chaos that happens on a ski hill. So those would be some of my recommendations. Even though you're given four minutes, it doesn't mean you need to cram in as fast as possible all of that information, you want to pick three highlights. Pick two highlights. Weave them into a little story and close with a strong and very good conclusion. Thank you, Scott, for your speech. What I, what I do notice today, especially some of the f speakers who do a lot of it, like teachers, or others, they're offended when they hear the bell. And it's because, it's because you cannot hear yourself do it. It's so normal, it's so common, and so, um, and stringing in three sentences, very common, it doesn't mean that it is as effective. Had you chosen to pause, start a new sentence? So yes, I heard every awe, and, um, and Kira was nice, she didn't hit the rooster every single time. So we have a few, we'll pick up the slips to give Scott some feedback. As I mentioned, Toastmasters is more than just public speaking. For me, it is a lot about running a meeting. It's about herding cats <laughs> in those meetings. It's about giving a good evaluation so that you're not offensive. You want to have a little bit of fun with it, but when you are, this is practice, volunteer, or you show up, you pay a couple hundred dollars a year maybe to be part of a club, but this is practice for you where there's very little harm in what you do. When you get to work, there's a lot of serious things that we might do. You don't want to jeopardize your job by being insensitive or perhaps not being effective. That is why I love Toastmasters. And I appreciate all of you coming with me on this little mini Toastmasters workshop. Do we have any comments, closing comments from anybody here? Good job. Yeah. Marilyn has been to a couple of clubs. Mine meets Thursday morning at 7 o'clock for an hour and a half in the morning at the basement of Scotia Place. 
you're more than welcome to join anytime. And Scott, you had a question. No, just some, some comments. So when Kathy asked me to prepare that, I was actually at Marmot, yeah. and I got to, uh, I was sitting in the patrol building uh, looking at the mountains and typing it. But one thing you did say was make sure you practice it and because I will know if you haven't done it. So I, I actually <laughs> felt very nervous, and I wanted to make sure I did you proud. So. He did confess every single time. He's like, I'm practicing. <laughs> And we have uh, the feedback I will collect for Scott so you can give a couple of comments. And I will announce the winner of the table topics this evening. Drum roll, please. Mr. Darren Chin! Thank you so much. I will return control back to our president, Scott Young. <laughs> and Kevin, if you'd like to take a, take a picture. Of course, because Kathy made the effort to be our presenter, we have, we will be on, in your name, donating uh, $20 to the Rotary Foundation, and awesome job. You really did a great job. Okay, that was great. And yes, I was nervous. And, it, and it, last night when I was walking Marley, I, my, our dog, I did practice a few times and I was looking for feedback from her and she was just like, eh. I don't think she was listening. She was more interested in smelling the snowbank. Okay, some upcoming speakers. Our very own uh, Stan Bissell will be talking about shelter box. I'm not going to say um, even more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then we, of course, we have Shine for Shelter Box uh, on the Friday. Because of that, we have no meeting on uh, January 29th. It, it's an executive meeting. February 5th, uh, Midpoint Club Assembly, hard to believe. Uh, half of our year is already over. Um, and February 12th, we have Mina Deacon, who some of you have met at our barbecue, and, and she worked at, uh, she volunteered at uh, Hawk, um, Hockey Night on White. And she'll be talking about black sheep violence. But our schedule is pretty much set. Uh, January, February, and March is also filling up. So uh, we have lots of great speakers coming up. Are there any final announcements before we do the four-way test? Can you My whiskers? When the, uh, um, oh, oh, word whiskers. <laughs> like, <he's> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can you explain my goatee? Well, I started when I was... It's not something, so the uh, Kristen um, Crash Jennings would like to know where <laughs> where the word whiskers came from to describe ums and ahs. That's not something I came up with. It was just something that somebody at our office mentioned, and it just seemed to fit. And you, when they mentioned word whiskers, it's like, oh, okay, I know what that means. So why do they call an apple an apple? I, I don't know, but... but. <laughs> Words do not have whiskers, that's right. So thank you. I just want to say thanks to Mike Greeny for stepping in to help with the uh, attendance and greeting everyone. Sorry we didn't have name tags. Paige uh, has them from last week. She apologized profusely. Um, so if you haven't paid, please do on the way out. Any other final comments, questions, President-elect Kevin? Happy to see everyone. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay, so let's finish off with the four-way test. Of all the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thanks, everyone. And please do send the feedback. I would love to get it. Have a great week. Hey!